Hello and welcome to another edition of the CEBL Show, the official podcast of the Canadian Elite Basketball League. I'm your co-host Sean Woodley here, joined once again by Amy Audibert. Amy, how's it going? It's going. You know, here we are a couple weeks later, uh, season kind of inching closer. Obviously, we're going to chat about the pushback, but I mean, this is life, right? We are constantly on our feet and adapting. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're still we we're still less than two months away from the season, which is what was the case on last week's last time's episode as well. Um, but yeah, that that is probably where we should begin. The news coming down that the CBL has revised its schedule. Still going to be a 14 game slate, but it's going to be a little bit more compressed as the new start date has been moved to June 24th, 19 days after June 5th, the original planned start date for the league um obviously this is kind of a necessary measure right now we're you know less you know a month and a week away from the original potential start date of the fifth things in ontario not doing so hot right now obviously you know any extra time to get vaccines and arms and um sort of see numbers go down and hopefully get through this third wave is going to be valuable to the league as again they're not doing a bubble this year they're not doing a setup in st Catharines. it's travel it's it's playing in arenas um, and you'd hope that these guys are able to get vaccinated and, and, and be healthy and all that stuff. But that extra time, I think, is going to be super valuable. Uh, Amy, reaction to the news and uh, thoughts on the CEBL's call to postpone the season, the start of the season by another 19 days. Well, reaction is bummer, right? You just want to get the season going. But uh, but obvious that's the reaction immediately. But then, you know, a couple seconds later, you go bravo for the league. Right. Because we know what two weeks means to this virus in either direction. And so I think it was a great decision, fully supportive of it. And I think the coaches and players and GMs are as well, right? And at the end of the day, the fans too, because two weeks might potentially mean getting a couple more fans in the building later on in the season. So uh, I totally agree and support the decision. Uh, Obviously, like it's it's frustrating that we're still here. Uh, 14 months mm-hmm. later, but at the end of the day, like that virus don't care. No. <laughs> it, it doesn't care, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so I, I, I certainly appreciate it. And, and of course, you know, number one is just, you just hope everyone's still being safe and smart and responsible. This is definitely a step in that direction. If the virus were a sentient being, it would be often found in like calendar club in the mall, just tearing apart calendars and agendas and planners because it doesn't care. It doesn't care about your plans. It doesn't care about the days you want to do things. Um, so yeah, fully support the decision to move back and glad that we're not losing any games from the schedule. It'll obviously make things more compressed, but um, you know, a month and a half or so to play all the games are going to need to play is more than enough time to get those 14 games in. There'll just be more basketball coming hotter and heavier and in a shorter succession. So um, we'll keep you posted. Of course, as things uh, develop and as we're now um, again, less than two months away from the start of the season, uh, but we'll keep you posted there. A couple before we get to today's guest, by the way, which I should have teased off the top if I were a better podcast host, Amy. Um, our guest today is Jordan Baker, the defending Canadian of the year in the CEBL, who just picked up a new head coaching gig in addition to his duties playing for the Edmonton Stinger. He is now going to be the head coach of the NAIT, the Nate Ooks uh, of the U Sports uh, West Division, I suppose. Is that whatever we're calling it? The West? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh, and they, uh, you know, he'll be head coaching over there in U Sports. Very exciting stuff for Jordan Baker. We have him on. Uh, we talk about uh that the new head coaching job his sort of philosophy will he be a screamer or not uh as well as some uh, notes on the edmonton stingers off season and some rapid fire questions for jordan so that's coming up just a little bit before we get to that though a couple other news and notes items to get to uh let's do a quick rundown of the free agency moves in the last few weeks here in the cebl lots of re-signings amy uh some important ones as well we've seen miles charvis who we spoke about with last uh, episode's guest, Charles Kissy, quite a bit. Uh, he is back with Guelph. Very exciting stuff for him. Kareem South resigns with the Edmonton Stingers. Uh, Kimball McKenzie back in Guelph, and I think that's a really big addition. Kimball McKenzie, to me, one of the best organizers and stabilizers in the CEBL. I remember the first season of the Nighthawks, things were in such disarray. Until Kimball McKenzie came in and all of a sudden, oh, here's this, uh, you know, division one grad player just kind of settling everything down and making everything work. That's a big signing as well. Uh, And a couple of guys moving teams, which we'll get to in a second here. But any of these re-signings in particular stand out to you as uh, of note or particular note here, Amy? 
Yeah, I think I think this has been a big couple of weeks for Guelph. You, you, Kimball and also Miles Jarvis, right? Coming back, those are two guys, obviously, that that mean a great deal to this team in terms of the energy that they always bring it. And really, I thought, and when you said Kimball came to Guelph, Charles Kissy came to Guelph halfway through, which in turn turned into Kimball. And so I appreciate the dynamic there. And um, and and but then let's not forget Jamal Reynolds and Joel Friesen also. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joel went to Ottawa, Jamal signed with Fraser Valley. So there's been a lot of movement with the Guelph roster, but that's also because don't forget Diamond Stone, don't forget Justin Jackson. They've had to make some room there as well. So uh, I think Guelph's had a, a, a big couple weeks, uh, but I really do like the Kareem South resigning as well. Uh, Jamal, uh, Jermaine Smalls, I, I believe he was actually in California visiting Roy Rana, uh, assistant with Sacramento, when he he saw Kareem, just went to a college mm-hmm. game and there's a kid from Toronto there, right? And so I like that story. I like the fact that he didn't stumble on him by accident, but kind of just like, oh, who's that? Oh, well, you know, and, and I always appreciate those dynamics with coaches and players too. So I think that was great. I think you need guys like Kareem Self on a championship team to play a role. So I think that was that was big time too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned the signings, uh, guys leaving Guelph as well, as you mentioned there. Kareem South, sorry, not Kareem South, Jamal Reynolds signing with the Fraser Valley Bandits after spending the first two years of the league with Guelph. And Joel Friesen continues his trek around the country, began with Fraser Valley, played last year with Guelph, and now has signed with our boy Javon Shepard up in Ottawa. Um, those signings in particular, Reynolds and Friesen, Amy, what importance do those moves hold, do you think? here uh, for both Ottawa and Fraser Valley and for the Nighthawks as well, losing those guys. Yeah. Well, I think when you look at a guy, Jamal, like, I just, I love watching him get up and down the court. I used to call Jamal, by the way, when he was playing at Canisius. So like I've, I've, I've watched him for a long time. <laughs> Actually, when he was in Canisius at one point, he was one of the top offensive rebounding players in the country. He's not super big. And so I think just bringing in that knack for the ball and just like really nice guy to just great teammate gets along with everybody. So I think that, you know, you lose a guy like that, it hurts. You get a guy like that, it helps. Uh, Fraser Valley is going to have a fun year, right? Because they've had a lot of roster movement as well. So I think there's tremendous opportunity for Jamal to go in there and maybe even play a little bit bigger of a role than he did at Guelph last year. The nice thing about Jamal, you mentioned the offensive rebounds. I can imagine, considering only uses one hand to shoot, the other one's just free to collect offensive rebounds if, he, if in fact, he misses. It's a, it's a nice little setup to have. He's hacked basketball. Um, so I just, to go back to the Guelph thing for a second as well, obviously losing Reynolds and Friesen is a hit to the guard depth, but I do think it's interesting that they now sort of have Kimball McKenzie and Miles Charvis back, those sort of stabilizers. And a lot of their moves have come on the wings and in the front court with those sort of big splashy soundings, the diamond stones uh, and the Justin Jacksons among others. Uh, Interesting team building there. I'm excited to see how that all comes together. Um, And Kareem South as well. Like you said, a guy who is, you know, now has a year of experience in the league. He's one of those guys who decided to go D1 to the CEBL, uh, sort of beginning uh, percolating trend we're seeing over the last couple of years here too as well. Um, and with the departure of Travis Daniels and sort of everyone kind of stepping up the ladder there a little bit is something that we talked about Jordan with Jordan Baker. Uh, I can imagine Kareem South sort of paired next to Xavier Moon in that backcourt uh, is going to have a pretty pronounced role on Edmonton this season as they look to repeat down one of their better players in Travis Daniels, who's now playing for Saskatchewan. Um, of course, we'll keep on posting you, uh, keeping you posted. That is, uh, I'm not posting anybody. I'm a terrible basketball player. Um, <laughs> but we'll keep you posted on signings over the next little while here too. When we get come back together in two weeks time, last bit of news here before we get to Jordan Baker, though, uh, Amy Montreal, Team name is up for, uh, it's up to the fans to decide what the Montreal expansion team's name and colors are going to be. They've announced the contest and sort of the the rules and everything that's going to go into it. Pretty fun stuff. I love a naming competition. You may not know this about me, but I'm a big mascot and nickname dork. I love myself a mascot. I constantly am updating my power rankings of the mascots in the CEBL. I'm looking forward to another one coming in, whether it's just like a large sentient smoked meat sandwich or something like that. Maybe something animal uh, themed. Who knows? But Montreal is going to have their team name. Last time I can remember like a team name competition, uh, I wasn't actually alive for this, but the Toronto Raptors team naming competition, which had a lot of fun and also terrible submissions because, you know, sometimes fans are going to have bad ideas. Amy, we have the power now. We are naming the Montreal team. 
What are you going with? Do you have any potential ideas out there? We know the league likes to go animal themed. Does that inform your decision making here? What do you got here for the Montreal expansion team in the CEBL's name? And we can also talk about mascots too, because that's the most important thing. The most important member of any team. It's not the best player. It's not the coach. It's the mascot. Uh, what do you got here, Amy? <laughs> Well, oh my gosh, I have nothing. This is like, I'm one of those people that stress. I'm probably one of those terrible submissions that took five hours to come up with. Um, definitely <laughs> an animal. It's definitely going to be an animal. Um, I'm a vegetarian. I hope it's not a smoked meat sandwich. Sorry, sorry to disappoint you, Sean. But I would say this, anytime I think of Montreal, I, and I don't know if it's just like because of the hockey, but I think of red. I, I don't mm -hmm. know. I think of some kind of red in there. I don't know, but um Hmm. I'm trying to think of, I would like something with like a little bit of like kind of a French twist to it. Right. To, to kind of mm -hmm. honor that, that community. Um, I don't know, maybe like just, we can just call it like they, they can be the Chris Boucher's. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh, Ken Birch has something to say about that. Uh, but I, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And Dort, I mean, listen, this mm. is, sorry, I'm going to just go on a soapbox for about 10 seconds. Uh, what an incredible, oh, no. like the, the timing of announcing this, because that community is fired up right now as they should be, because you look at Lou Dort, you look at Ken Birch, you look at Chris Boucher, like it's not just one guy, right? It is now a collection and basketball, like this is what you need to take off. So you just applaud the CEBL for, obviously they didn't wake up two weeks ago and say, Hey, let's put it. This has been going on. These conversations have been in the mix, but the timing is absolutely brilliant of this all coming together. So I did not give you a name, but I certainly gave you some brilliant conceptual timing issues here. I got to say, I think the league is in need of, uh, and I'm not saying go take the Charlotte Hornets colors, but they're in need of some teal and some purple. These are important colors to have as part of your jersey profile across the league. They will sell like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can get Starter on board and get some Montreal CEBL unnamed basketball team merch going that way. Um, I I'm in for the any color that was big in the 1990s, whether it is like eggplant that like the Colorado Avalanche mm -hmm. and the Anaheim Mighty Ducks started to use, whether it's a purple like the Toronto Raptors, uh, some sort of teal. Something in that vein is uh, is what I'm calling for here. Why not the best of both worlds? It could be a red and a teal. You mentioned the red for all the, wow. the history, the Canada and all that. Get some teal in there as well. And uh, to me, that is a winning jersey combination. Yeah, you just, you dominated that and you were right. See, like this is, you're right. It's your passion. You have a knack for that. Like I, 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 I came up with red. So no, 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 no. Sean, you make the world go round. That I, I am with you now. Now I can't get the teal and purple out of my head. So there you it's go. so we're done. <laughs> so I'm currently on a, a on a website that is called a to z animals.com. We know they like the M, the, the names of the animals to be part of this. And look, I'm going for some alliteration here. So we're gonna just kind of run through. Uh, you tell me, rank it on a scale of zero to five. Does it work as a potential name? For the montreal team and i know there should be some french themed names in here as well i don't know the french titles of a lot of these animals we can figure that out on future episodes we've got plenty of time here but we've got the montreal macaws parrots is that does that work for you at all uh, macaws i mean yeah maybe no okay okay i'm gonna say two two and a half i'm gonna say this okay. do not give me basic sean we know this league does not have basic names there are no tigers we have river lions we have night hawks we have honey badgers like we don't have giraffes right so don't give me something okay. basic or i'm just shooting it down okay all right that's totally <laughs> fine uh we've got how about the montreal mammoths we go prehistoric on everybody's ass we get montreal mammoths one i don't like that Oh, but imagine the mascot. You could have two people as part of this suit, kind of like you know, yeah, but one listen, person's the front legs, one person's the back legs. Think of the potential. No, yeah, but like you're going big and slow, and this league is like up and down. They are not big and slow, so I got to x right. the mammoth. That's fair. Okay, how about this? A, uh, a, a member of the weasel family that is native to Canada, all over the place, the Montreal Minx. M-I-N-K-S, oh. Minx. Yeah, I'm down with that. Like I could say a four, three and a half, four. I had All a right. ferret, I had a pet ferret growing up. So I'm, I'm down with the fam. <laughs> Excellent. We like that. Uh, I mean, we could also just go classic. If we want to go super Canadian to lean into it, 
the Montreal Moose is a potential. I'm not a huge fan of non-pluralized sports team names. Again, a thing I have two strong opinions about, but that's an option as well. Uh, what does Montreal Moose do for you? No, I'm, I'm, I'd have to go with Minx over Moose. Okay, like, I got one last submission know. for you. This one, again, okay. maybe it's a little too close to Mammoth. I would argue this animal is a little bit more sort of adaptable, survivable, agile, lean, quick, whatever it might be. They seem like they're just made of muscle, much like, I don't know, Jordan Baker, our guest coming up in just a second. Uh, we've got <laughs> muskox, the Montreal muskox. What do you got? I, I don't know enough about the animal. I give it a three, but Minx still is, is taking me over. You know what I love? I, I, how about like a Komodo dragon? <laughs> I mean, you could do that. There's also the smaller, and look, this is coming from a person whose brother works with reptiles, so I know all the names of the reptiles, but the smaller sort of scaled down version, the less terrifying version of the Komodo dragon is the monitor lizard, the Montreal monitors. How does that work? Monitors. Yeah, I mean, not exactly I like, a native yeah, species I, to the southern Quebec area, but hey, yeah. what is a blackjack and why is it in Ottawa? Who knows? It just sounds good. So uh, I feel like <laughs> that's some good brainstorming. Let us know as well. Uh, hashtag uh, Montreal Madness or something like that. Uh, let us know what you think the team name of the Montreal team should be, and let the people in Montreal know as well as they whittle that search down over the next little while here. I'm sure as more delusional ideas pop into my stupid brain, I will pass them along on this podcast and I'll let you grade them as we go along here. It might be a running bit as I just have like these eureka moments over the next little while thinking of potential new team names. I'm far too excited about this, Amy. Uh, I need to settle the hell down. Let's do that with Jordan Baker, shall we? Jordan Baker of the Edmonton Stingers and the defending Canadian of the year in the CEBL is coming up next. Let's get to it now. All right, joining us now on the CEBL show is the defending Canadian Player of the Year in the CEBL, also a defending champion with the Edmonton Stingers of the CEBL in the Summer Series. It is forward Jordan Baker. Jordan, how's it going, man? I'm good. How are you, Sean? Doing well. We're really happy to have you today on the podcast. And uh, I mean, first of all, congrats on the new job, taking over as head coach for the NAIT OOCS, the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. Um, I guess the first sort of question on that is, uh, you know, how did that come together and how cool is it for you that you get to both coach and play and be at the peak of your powers in the CEPL kind of at the same time? Yeah, um, the job was a little bit of a surprise. Um a former colleague of mine, actually Slav Kornick, was the head coach there for the past couple of years. Um, and there's some, been some restructuring at Nate. So um, he was hoping to stay on, um, but got another job opportunity somewhere else. So um, all signs were leading to him returning to that position. Um, so I had no intention on applying because I know he was doing a great job there. Um, and then, you know, last minute things happened. I made a couple of calls, tried to submit my application a little bit late. Um, and things worked out. So I'm excited to, to get started once things open up a little bit more here uh, in Alberta. I don't know another player and coach, right? You're a professional basketball player while you're recruiting. Uh, say with, without getting into trouble, how do you think that's going to help you a bit? Uh, I mean, I think my connections um, across Canada are certainly going to be to my advantage, um, you know, between the U sports and professional ranks. Um, when you're looking at athletes coming out of high school, especially this year, or transfer athletes, you know, who are now facing the backlog of talent that exists because no one's used a year of eligibility over the last 12 months. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting situation. I still haven't quite got my uh, feet wet in the recruiting game quite yet. Still trying to get a, adjusted and um, sort of get all the information that I need to, to make a recruiting pitch uh, that is going to be enticing to some student athletes. Well, just get the interviews, get the sideline interviews and you can do all the recruiting you want. <laughs> yeah. You just throw your CEBL championship ring on the table and say, "Hey, come play for me." Is that a uh, is that now a thing you can do going forward? I mean, uh, I wish I could say I had the CEBL ring in hand, but I'm um, still waiting on the ring ceremony. Uh, when that happens, I think our season will be uh, um, pretty close, and our roster will be pretty set. So um, that may not be a strategy I can employ uh, this season. Can I, I, I ask you, Jordan? Jump in quick. Sorry, go ahead, oh. Amy. 
Okay. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> this is so, we're just really excited to have you here. Um, your parents are obviously like also probably raised you in a gym, right? And your mom was a national champ as a head coach at the University of Alberta. Correct me if I'm wrong, but tricks. And so does the conversations, have they changed at all between Jordan, the elite basketball player, Jordan, the assistant coach, now Jordan, the head coach, uh, any kind of different advice thrown your way? Well, my mom, yes, she is a, a national championship, won the first and only national championship with the U of A Pandas um, on the women's side. Um, her advice to me was don't become a coach. Um, so I, in my typical fashion, didn't really listen. Um, so, I mean, she's been a great resource, both her and my dad, um, in terms of, you know, growing up coaching me. Um, and then also, you know, as I've started to enter into the coaching ranks, they've been, um, supportive to a degree. Um, you know, they'd love to see me put my business degree to use instead of, um, you know, pounding my head against the wall, watching film till all hours of night, but, um, it's what I love to do. And, uh, you know, they'll support me no matter what. So I'm curious, Jordan, you know, I think we've seen the last couple of years, the sort of coaching scene in Canada has really kind of expanded. We're seeing guys get assistant jobs in the NBA. We're seeing the G League. We're seeing, of course, in the CEBL, lots of guys from U Sports getting that opportunity to coach in the CEBL, get that professional coaching experience. I'm curious, has there been some support from that sort of community? I know Jermaine Small, obviously, a U Sports coach himself with, with, uh, with Ryerson. Um, you know, ha has there been that sort of community? And what do you think of this sort of wave of coaching we're seeing in recent years here in Canada, where the talent, much like the player talent pool, is kind of being leveled up seemingly every year? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, coaching, especially in Alberta, is is challenging because there's only so many head coaching jobs that are full, full time. And um, so now you're really seeing the best of the best getting jobs, um, whether it's at the ACAC level or um, at the U sports level. And then obviously, as you mentioned, um, at the CBL level. So there's a select number of jobs. And so to be able to, to get those jobs, you've got to be super qualified. You've got to be um, especially talented as a coach and proven. So um, I think I'm a little bit lucky with it being my first head coaching position to kind of fall into a, a touristic situation at Nate where they've got the resources, they've got the history, um, having won, you know, two national championships in the program history. So um, I'm excited to get started. Um, and the, the support has been uh, overwhelming from everybody that I've, you know, got texts or calls from, um, from former teammates at U of A to coaches to, uh, um, you know, everyone across the country has been, has been awesome and supportive. Um, you know, especially in a pandemic year where we're not actually sure what the season might look like. Mm -hmm. I, I got to ask one more for coaching. Just, I want to ask about George Hoyt, obviously an assistant coach with Edmonton, but had the opportunity to coach you back in high school. And so if you could maybe choose a couple things that coach that you're going to pull from him as your career really takes off on the sideline as well. I mean, the, the biggest thing I'm trying to pull from him is I'm trying to get him to come be an assistant with me at Nate uh, in the fall. <laughs> Um, we're already recruiting we're already yeah. recruiting here we he's, go <laughs> he's done his time at the high school level so i'm trying to bring him up with me um obviously he's been a great mentor for me he still um is the guy that i go to anytime i need to to get into a gym or, or find a workout in the summers um to stay on top of my game I mean, he's tremendous in terms of player development and program development um what they've done at harry what he's done at harry Ainley is is pretty special the number of national or uh, provincial championships he's won at that level so um, for him, I just, the biggest thing I'm going to take away if I'm not able to, to steal him um, away from Ainley is, you know, just to have really high standards and to make sure you hold those guys to those standards. Make sure things are very clear about what your expectations are um, so that there's no surprises when guys come in and get, um, you know, yelled and screamed at when they're not living up to what you think they can achieve. Yeah, are you going to be a yeller or a screamer? Are you going to be a player's coach? What's the Jordan Baker uh, coaching philosophy? I mean, is it possible to be both? Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think I do come from a little bit of a unique place where I am still an athlete. So I do understand kind of where, um, their heads are at in terms of, you know, what their priorities are, some of the challenges they're facing as young guys. So, um, I think it's going to be a challenge for me not to be a player's coach, um, <laughs> to try to create that separation, but, um, I'm just excited to get started see kind of the guys we've got in the building, um, and hopefully, you know, build something pretty special at Nate. Your post workouts are going to be elite. Ouch. Like those guys are going to need some ice. You better have two trainers in the gym. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, with the roster we've got right now, I might have to play some small ball. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to turn some six, three guards into some uh, stretch fours. So we'll see. Awesome. <laughs> 
So Jordan, flipping things over to the Edmonton Stingers, uh, been a bit of an interesting offseason as Travis Daniels, a mainstay of your team for the last couple of years, is now headed to play for the Saskatchewan Rattlers. Um, you know, I thought you and Travis kind of formed probably the best front court in the CEBL throughout two years. Um, what does the loss of Travis mean in, in terms of the team going forward here? And uh, what's it going to be like going up against Travis in a handful of games against Saskatchewan this year? Yeah, I mean, Travis is... Uh, was an awesome teammate um, and we're all excited for him to to get the opportunity to play in Saskatchewan and kind of be the face of their franchise I think you know with him and his talent um, it was all love from us obviously we'd love to have him back with the Edmonton Stingers but it is a business at the end of the day so um, it's it's gonna be pretty special to face off against them uh, you know four or five times I haven't looked at in detail at the schedule but I know we play Sask a bunch of times so um, I think it'll be pretty fun I mean having gone against him in practice for the last couple of years, you know, his tendencies a little bit, um, but you know, he's a special talent and, you know, hopefully we can contain him and, and still come out on top and still be friends afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's ask about someone who is coming back though, Xavier moon, or at least projected to, I guess, um, you know, this is a guy that pretty special. Our robotic cameras could not keep up with him last year, pretty fast, gets up and down. And so um, what, what do you look forward to about, probably playing with him again this season. Yeah. I mean, when, when the ball is in his hands, I mean, he makes life easier for everybody on the floor. Um, he's such a matchup nightmare that the defense is always focused on him and he does a great job of sharing the ball. So you put yourself in a, in the right spot and he's going to find you. And so when he's on the floor, when he's got the ball in his hands, he just facilitates everything. You know, you, you asked Jermaine, he probably is not running a whole lot of sets. It's see if we can get Xavier a touch and he's going to make something special happen. And you know, obviously it's no secret. He's the key to our success over the past couple of years. Um, so we're excited to have him back and, uh, you know, hopefully we can, can build on the momentum we had last year in the summer series. A couple of rapid fire questions about the stingers for you, Jordan, uh, who is the guy on the team who is the least fun to go up against in practice? Obviously you haven't practiced for this coming season. So let's go based on the first couple of years of the stingers, maybe some names that, uh, that we recall anyone in particular that you just like, Oh my God, are we have to guard this guy in practice. Like seriously. Uh, well, we like start every practice with one-on-one uh, -on -one from center court. Um, so you kind of get exposed to everybody. Um, I mean, Xavier will tell you I lock him down every single time. So that's not really a challenge for me anymore. Um, I think a guy who's pretty tough um, is Adika. He, you know, you give him lots of space. Um, he's a guy that's going to knock it down from, from deep. And, you know, he's crafty getting to the rim, especially when there's no help defense. He's going to make sure that uh, he challenges you every single time. So I'd say Adika is pretty tough in the one-on-one -on -one for sure. Um, what was your last playlist? I hear you're the guy that has the most diverse playlist and everybody has to listen to it. So Jordan's Baker, his last one as of today was. Um, the last song I was actually doing dishes this morning. Um, I went with nineties dance hits. Um, so the last song actually that was on my phone is walking on broken glass by Annie Lennox. Um, so that's that a on, big, it's a big track for sure. Is that on Spotify? Uh, Apple music. Oh I my gosh. I, I did the nineties, the greatest nineties hits a couple yeah. of like, days ago. There you yeah, go. Yeah. There's some gems in there. A couple of George Michaels. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Jordan best dunker, uh, that you've played with so far in two years with Edmonton. Um, uh, I think Camba has got to be up there. Um, Matt, like, he should be in the NFL the way that his athleticism and his ability to play above the rim. I mean, when he actually cranks it up into top gear, uh, it's pretty impressive and scary at the same time. Um, so I'd say he's, he's definitely up there. I mean, Travis elevates and has, you know, the advantage of being six, nine, six, 10, but um, Cam is pretty explosive for sure. I do want to ask you, Jordan, about uh, a couple of the guys. You mentioned Matt Combat actually is a guy I want to talk about. So he is a guy who I think has kind of been slept on for the first couple of years of the league as he um, sort of, you know, a bit of a down the depth chart, I would say, considering, you know, yourself, Travis Daniels, Xavier Moon, you know, lots of talents already on that team, lots of shots already, you know, sort of spoken for. But Kamba is a guy who I feel like every time I see him play, it seems like he's getting better, sort of more in control of that extreme athleticism we talked about last year. He was quite good in the CBL Summer Series. You figure this year, you know, with Travis now out of the picture, 
it's probably going to only scale up even further. You know, what have you seen from Matthew Kamba in his first couple of years uh, with the Stingers? You know, a guy who I think, you know, would go down as maybe the guy who's improved the most since the onset of the league. Yeah, I mean, I think underrated is the is the perfect way to describe him. Um, what he does on both sides of the basketball are certainly overlooked. I mean, no disrespect to Beyonce Weber, but Matthew Campbell was the defensive player of the year last year in the summer series. Um, <laughs> you know, what he does, you know, he can guard one through four, uh, makes life difficult for point guards, makes life difficult for wings. Um, you know, you look at what he did against Guelph, um, you know, against uh, McConnell, or yeah, McDaniel, something, one of the, their top guy ended up with like six points at the end of the night. Cause he handled them. Um, I don't even know the scouting report. Cause I, it was just combo. You deal with them. Baker, you go stand on the side and try to get a couple of rebounds. Um, but it was, I mean, he's become a, an elite shooter, which is going to open up everything in his game. So like I said, you know, moon is going to find him anytime he's open. Um, and then he's just, like you said, growing every single time he steps on the floor. Um, he's got another year of Leb gold, experience under his belt now and as a young guy I think he's very motivated to to come out and you know I, I honestly think he was deserving of an all-star nod last year as well so um, I think he's a big piece for us and you know it, it, we're very happy that he's back with us this summer. I just want to ask one more question about the CEBL um, before Sean finishes or jumps in but you, you, you're in this unique space because you're a household face in the league in terms of being a player, but you also do have this other mind where you are a coach. And, and, and so just, you know, going into the third season now for this league, what do you, what do you think about, I know if anyone asked anything about Jordan Baker, I said, he's candid and he says what he's thinking. Um, and so really like, what do you, what do you think about this league and where do you think it could potentially end up? Uh, I mean, I think there's lots of, new faces as we're seeing um lots of new signings um and for me i think the cbl is a high quality league and i think something that's so important is being proven in the cbl you know you look at a signing like saskatchewan with travis you know what you're going to get you're going to get a first team all-star who's going to come in and impact the game in many different ways um so i'm excited to see what these new guys bring to the table i know there's a couple of big names um, but can you step on the floor and make an impact? You know, there's Canadian talent is not to be slept on. So when you bring in all these Americans, um, you might have to pump the brakes a little bit on expectations because guys got to come in and perform night in, night out. And, you know, if it's a compressed schedule, you got to be ready to play five games in nine days. And um, I think it's a growing league that is going to surprise some people, especially the new ones that are coming in and thinking, okay, well, I can just come in and dominate. It's like, maybe not. So we'll see. Okay, wait, I'm jumping Jordan. in with one more. Wait, I, yeah. I kind of saw your Instagram and you got, are you friends with Kelly Olenek? I'm assuming, you know, you West Coast guys, you know each other. Do you work the Olenek Clinic? Because I want a t-shirt. Like if I have to sign up as a camper, I will. But that's the coolest name for a camp. <laughs> yeah, um, Kelly and I actually played against each other. We're the same age. We played against each other, provincial team um, growing up. And then we spent a couple summers um, with the national program as well. We played on the U19 team together a couple of summers with the development team and then a couple with the uh, national team. So we've known each other for a long time. I do have um, four years experience at the Olenek Clinic. So uh. I have a full repertoire <laughs> of shirts. Um, camp the coolest shirts. name. Come on. I have a couple of like zip up hoodies that have the clinic branded on there. So I got, I got all the swag all the year. So um, yeah, him and I are pretty good friends. Um, he's actually come out to Edmonton to work the Baker Elite Clinic as well. So um, we've kind of gone back and forth supporting each other. Um, he's a good friend of mine. So we, we can maybe try to find a way to get you a shirt um, one of these days here. Okay. I will also rock a Baker Elite as well. Okay. Perfect. Just so we know. <laughs> Um, you mentioned uh, before all the Canadian talent in the league and sort of the, the depth of the talent pool. Obviously, last year you were tops among the entire crew, winning Canadian of the Year. Of course, you were runner-up year year before behind Guillaume Bucard. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Jordan. Who is your biggest competition as we head into the third season of the CEBL to take away your Canadian of the Year crown in year three? Um, do I have to give you one name or can I give you multiple? There's lots of guys that I really multiple like. If you want, I mean, it's it's a cop out, but that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I think number one is. I really like Trey Bell Haynes' game out of Niagara. Uh, I think, you know, him playing in the BBL 
over in Germany is only going to give him more confidence coming into the summer. Uh, I think he's a tremendous player. Um, I think, you know, there's a couple guys out of Hamilton. You look at somebody like Dwayne Notice, who's coming back, super motivated off the Achilles. Um, he's definitely a guy that's, you know, poised to have a big summer series. Um, and JV Mukama, I think, showed, um, you know, as a, as a newer pro that he's able to, to fill it up with the best of them. So, you know, if Hamilton can have a, a good season, I think there's a couple of guys out there that are potentially, um, you know, looking at the Canadian player of the year. How cool is it for you to see guys uh, like Mukama, you know, you sports guys who, um, you know, kind of had had journeys throughout professional basketball now sort of taking their claim in a similar way to you. Uh, as stars of this league, you know, what does it say about the U sports game, frankly, that so many of the league stars are U sports alums? Yeah. I mean, you look at, you know, the top 10 players, I guess, if you look at the first and second team all-stars from last year, um, you got a, a ton of, of high level U sports talent from, you know, JV to, to Tommy scrub to myself. Um, so there's lots of, of guys that are, very well decorated at the U sports level. And now they're showing that they can do it on a professional level. I mean, obviously the scrubs have, have had historic careers with our national team as well. So um, I think it's only going to do good things for the game here in Canada and people realizing that, you know, division one maybe isn't always the answer. Um, obviously if you can find a good fit, then, then that's your prerogative. But I think, uh, I think U sports is really going to benefit from, you know, seeing all these guys, all these alumni, who are, are having success at the, at the uh, professional level. Awesome stuff, Jordan. We really appreciate you taking the time today to join us. Uh, we wish you all the best in your coaching gig as well as in the upcoming CEBL season, just a couple months away. Um, we really appreciate it, man. Hopefully we can do this again sometime. 